France trains her youth. A big crowd attends this display at Lyons. Children of all ages, from kiddies like these to older boys and girls, 10,000 of them from schools all over France, perform these evolutions which give one an impression of a human sea. Roosevelt, wife of the United States President, visits a coal mine near Washington. It is incredibly reported that Mr. Roosevelt said, don't go down the mine, mother, I've got enough on my hands. But Mrs. Roosevelt went all the same. The Navy and the nation mourn a distinguished servant, the late Admiral of the Fleet, Sir Charles Madden. A funeral service is held in Westminster Abbey in honor of this great sailor who will ever be remembered for his work in the Battle of Jutland. The coffin is borne on a gun carriage in procession from the Admiralty down White Hall, and eight admirals, a field marshal, and an air marshal act as pallbearers. On the coffin, draped with the Union Jack, lies the Admiral's gold-hilted sword and cocked hat. The cortege passes Parliament Square and then, on arriving at the Abbey, is met by distinguished representatives from the Admiralty, the government and foreign nations, who unite in paying a last tribute to a brilliant and gallant naval officer. The death of Lord Bing of Vimy is also a sad blow to the nation. June has so far been a flaming success in England and... Oh, I beg your pardon, this is not the right picture. Just a moment, please. Oh, yes, of course, the editor's just reminded me. This nice wintry scene is the very thing to talk about in our present lovely weather. We're in the Austrian Alps and ploughs carve a way through great snowdrifts and men shovel and beat it down to make a motor road, a road of solid snow through the mountains. Here's the road. Austria, like us, may have funny weather in summer, but I don't see any beacons. Amid scenes of more than usual brilliance, the Governor General of South Africa, the Earl of Clarendon and Lady Clarendon, arrive to open the Jubilee session of the Union Parliament in Cape Town. South African flag flies over the council chamber and after delivering the speech from the throne, His Excellency returns to Government House. Britain has a new cabinet. Mr. Ramsay MacDonald drives to Buckingham Palace where the King accepts his resignation from the Premiership. Shortly afterwards, Mr. Stanley Baldwin leaves number 11 Downing Street and also drives to the palace. There the king appoints him prime minister and he returns to Downing Street to form his new national cabinet. Mr. MacDonald found the strain of office too onerous and it is Mr. Baldwin who is entrusted with the task of guiding the nation.